Hello, welcome to Adobe Live. We're here on a sunny Thursday. We got our, our guest Rosina Bosco back for day two. Hi guys. And we are gonna dive in a, a little bit more into what we were working on yesterday and that's an experience that is uh, trying to aggregate all of your cooking and uh, recipes and uh, just really kind of taking your uh, mess that is all of your tabs and links and putting them in one place. But um, before we do that, we just want to um, remind everybody to uh, take the survey that's on the top. If you want a year of Creative Cloud, it's just a really great way to help us help you by creating better content to just help serve you. And that's something that uh, we just really want you to take a little bit of time to do. Um, just want to know more or less like what's working about the live stream, what could be better, how can we improve? It's all about iterating, right? This is design show and we want to get feedback. It's all about user feedback. Yeah. And you guys so, are our users. Right. It's at the top of your chat, your chat just go ahead and uh, click that link and, and complete that survey for a year of Creative Cloud. Uh, great deal there. Yes. Also, great deal. we have the chat and win coming up in 30 minutes, so make sure to come in for that and just sign in and chat. And then creative uh, challenge reviews. We're gonna talk about some more uh, of uh, your 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 uh, projects that you've been working on. So if we can look over at my screen um, to see what we're gonna be looking at. So. Uh, we saw a lot of asset management for designing health food, which is really related to what you're working on, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool to get some inspiration, yeah. visual representations of how food is organized. Um, but I think we're going to see a lot more of the emoji reactions today. And um, that is that was something that was we saw a couple projects related to that. We'll go over those again, but there's more advanced prototyping now to taking it to that next step. And that's going to be the the really like cool part of like how auto animate works, and I'm sure awesome. Andre ha uh, Hawk is gonna uh, show you how to um, use states in combination with auto animate to do some really cool um, engaging interactions. Mm -hmm. um, so just stay tuned for for that. If you did create a project, we're gonna review them, and I'm, there's a high likelihood to to just see what you got. And hello everybody in the chat. Thank you for being here. Uh, would love to know where you're from. That's something that Rosina was interested yeah. in. like. Where in the world are you? Where are you? It's <laughs> virtual these days, so like we don't know where everyone is. Right. So um, there's also one more really cool thing that I want to mention, and that is if you have a free version of XD, you have unlimited sharing until April of next year, which is I feel like an amazing, amazing thing to have you be able to take part in. So all the experiences that you create, you can now create links and share them with as many people as you want. Take advantage of the co-editing the co new feature. Um, that way you can just bring more people into the conversation of design and iterate and just make better stuff nice. by being transparent. So that's a really cool bonus for you. Um, I'll remind you about that later, but it's a really, really great way for you to share your projects. Yes, we definitely got, is. Look where we got. We have everyone from around the world. My mom from Milburn. Hi, mom. <laughs> What's up, mom? <laughs> Philly in the house. We got uh, Paris. New York. I Iraq. Wow. Ukraine. Awesome. Milburn. We got Melbourne, California. That's not that's not too far. Uh, <laughs> New Zealand. Cloudy Kansas City. Okay, look at that. Represent. So we're in San Francisco. It's really beautiful, actually. It's really beautiful here. It's a uh, it's, it's a rivaling late, Boulder weather. Late summer. Yeah. It's still kind of like not even <laughs> sweater weather, uh, t-shirt weather. It's kind of kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, but we're enjoying it. We're not going to complain. No. It's so gorgeous. I feel like without further ado, just kind of. Hand it over Let's to jump you. Jump back into where we where we picked up where we left off yesterday. Let's do it, Pakistan. Look at this. Um, oh. I know it's awesome. <laughs> so uh, I'll just briefly introduce myself again. Uh, my name is Rosina. I'm from uh, Boulder by way of New York City, and I own a software development company called Flatirons Development. So visit us and follow us on LinkedIn. Check out our website, which is going to be updated like in two days. And um, I have an awesome team in Colombia, and I'm co-founder with my um, amazing fiance. Mike, he's in the chat. Yeah. Hey, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I'll just go through a little bit of what what we were talking about yesterday, and then today we're going to jump into some really exciting visual stuff. Um, so the problem that I was talking about yesterday was that I love cooking. It's my favorite thing to do after work to like just, you know, get away from my computer, get like get on my feet and, and actually get involved in something and use my brain in a different way. Um, but I have 
so many cookbooks. Mm. I have so many magazine articles about recipes that catch my eye. I have bookmarks and literally my entire saved feed on Instagram is recipes. Like I have a serious problem where I need to find all of these at one time. Right. Um, and so that's what you guys were helping me make today. And all of my cookbooks are filthy. Oh yeah. That's like one thing that happens, right? It is one thing that happens. <laughs> and here's the thing, I kind of don't mind it. Right. Cause it's like, you know it's the recipes proof. that you go back mm -hmm. to over and over. Cause yeah. they're like, have like oil splatters right. and they're sticky. <laughs> 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 I was like going, like looking at my cookbook last night. I was like, man, these are a mess. I know. Because they're right near all your cooking stations, Totally. Right? And the thing yeah. is, I will never get rid of my cookbooks. They're like artifacts, but they can just kind of stay as artifacts that don't get sticky anymore. Yeah. And we can use this to look up all our recipes. Um, so I think a lot of people are sharing the same problem I am and, and holler out if you are. We have someone visiting us from Tatooine. So if anybody's familiar with the Star Wars universe, I'm, I'm not. just saying, <laughs> Tatooine is, seems like a really cool place. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. I know. Christina says you, you want to eat. We're going to get really hungry throughout this uh, live yes. stream, so just bear with us. I wanted. I had an idea. I was like, I'm going to eat before this show because we're going to see a bunch of food pictures. Yeah. I didn't. You didn't? I had a huge breakfast this morning. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just because of that, but I'm still going to get hungry. I have coffee. If you see me say something, it's just iced coffee, okay? <laughs> My friend Beth says it's true. I'm the best cook. Thank you, Beth. That means a lot. Yeah. Um, all right. So the solution here is a recipe organization website that allows users to easily save their favorite recipes all in one place. Who's excited? I am. Um, so yesterday we talked about our target audience. Uh, we did some user stories and user flows. We talked about feature alignment for MVP versus post MVP. Um, and we got to wireframing. We did not get to prototyping. Today, we are gonna do high fidelity designs and we are gonna prototype this experience. Maybe we can talk about adding some features and functionalities if there's time, um, but uh, let's just focus on, on getting some really beautiful screens out and getting them interactive. Yeah, let's do that. Which Julian's gonna help me with. Yeah. Um, all right, so I think right now we can go to my screen. Um, Let's see where we left off yesterday. So we, let's just look at the really, really scrappy wireframes that we put together and review them. So here was kind of our home page where you have um, some kind of grid of recipes. And again, my process in the beginning is really just to kind of sketch things out. Oftentimes I'll sketch on my notebook and then I'll bring it right into here. And as you can see, this is like lower than low fidelity. This is almost like skeleton. Um, but I really just like to map out the experience and see the flow from screen to screen before diving into higher fidelity. So on this page, we have our grid of recipes. We have some filters at the top because we know filtering and tagging is going to be really, um, really important to this experience. We want our big giant CTA to add new recipes, some affordance to search, and everybody liked the vertical um, navigation for the yeah. profile and home. So that was the consensus. Yes, that was a consensus. Um, so then when you go to add a new recipe, we have this great modal where you're gonna add three ways to add a recipe. You're gonna upload a photo. So let's say I have, you know, the stickiest page in my cookbook that has been <laughs> oil splattered and I wanna preserve it and easily find it. I'm gonna snap a photo of it. I'm gonna upload it here. Or I can go to my bookmark, enter a URL and save it. Or I can just copy and manually paste in text. Right. So three different ways to do it. Um, then we go to the experience where you're naming your recipe, you're assigning tags, you're maybe writing new tags, writing some notes to yourself. Um, you save your recipe, really fancy modal here. Uh, and then you go and view your recipe. You can see related recipes. And we talked about grouping and viewing recipes as a collection. This is a, a personal um, feature of request that I have. May not get to it today, so we'll see about that. Right. All right. And this is all for the minimum viable yes. product. Yes, yes, thank you. We're framing this around, if we had a client, if uh, I had a client who came to my company and said, I wanna make this app, um, I have a great go-to-market strategy, uh, what we would do is bring them back to what is your minimum viable product that we can put out there, test and make sure that 
people know how to use it and people want to use it. And then we can expand it from there. So we're really looking at what is the absolute minimum amount of features we need in order to release this to the masses and, and test it and iterate based on that. Right. Awesome. Okay, so today we are going to get into lots of fun visuals. Um, before we dig into any of that, sneak previews, um, the first thing I typically do is pull a bunch of competitor sites. Um, and so I do, this isn't necessarily, I do do competitive analysis. We're not gonna necessarily cover that in here because I already knew about the product I wanted to make and um, had previously known that, that nothing really existed um, that met my needs. Right. But what I wanna do here is when thinking about the branding, I really wanna know what the ecosystem of um, food sites and blogs are, are representing right here. So if we look at some of the more popular ones, you know, you see a lot of um, the red theme bring, comes out a lot to me. So we have Epicurious, it's like this orangey, Food Network is red, All Recipes is orange, Yumly is orange. So there's like already a theme here. Right. Um, I also looked up a couple of the other recipe managers. So these look a little bit dated, but even still, it's interesting because you can see when we have blue and green, for some reason, like it doesn't resonate as appetizing to me at all. And I wonder if these cool colors are um, really like impacting the way your mind thinks about the subject matter at hand. Right. So I, I always like to just get this like holistic view of what's what's going on right. and and why, you know? Oh, again, the New York Times um, is also red. So like literally <laughs> almost every recipe site out there that is, you know, one of the big ones is like a red or orange color, which is really interesting. It's like, it's really funny how colors seems to have done this, like that speaks to us in these ways, like yeah. the the oranges, the the reds and the yellows, like kind of like McDonald's, right? Like yeah, all totally. these, these like big food chains, right. they use these reds. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily think right. that a red It's like a very passionate that. color that is just like evokes hunger. Yeah, it's, Stran it's bizarre. Kind of strange, but you're right, like the blue, Feels like a like a transit app or yeah, something. Yeah, it feels you know? like a doc a doctor. Right. Or, yeah, exactly. something exactly. in the something, medical field right. or sterile. I think right. it's sterility. Yeah, and then the green, like I see where they're kind of going, like maybe like on that health food side, mm -hmm. but it still kind of looks a little like unsettling. It, yeah, this right? shade of green definitely does. Right. Um, and so I also did a little bit of research and just read about different. Um, color theory when applying to food mm -hmm. and nutrition. Um, and Juan Felipe said that in the chat, color theory and oh, warm colors are always gonna go. interact with your appetite. Exactly, so true. exactly, it's so true. Um, and so well, I'm not gonna read all of this to you guys, but basically I pulled some I pulled some information here and this is my process. I just kind of read these articles and then kind of marinate on them. Red and yellow were the chief food color, colors it says here, mm -hmm. evoking taste buds, stimulating appetites. Um, orange naturally lends itself to another appetizing color. Green connotes um, eco-friendliness and healthy, mm. but it can also be unappetizing. Blue and purple are cool, so you know we mm. kind of stay away from those. But anyway, I just like to kind of inform myself a little bit right. with the kind of color theory that goes into choosing and, a color. And don't use brown. Don't use brown, no. <laughs> Although they do say in here that brown is more effective than black because it's it's sure. again a little bit warmer, but yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. Little. yeah, it's yeah, not recommended. Right, exactly, <laughs> not recommended. Um, so that's first what I do is is just take a look at the competition. Um, the next thing I do is do some inspiration, um, and this is again even before I get to branding because I'm really just trying to think about what kind of experience I want this to feel like. When I focus on inspiration, I, I focus on two different realms. I look at um, existing sites and tools that I currently use that have an element um, that, is, that is a core focus of my product. Right. So if our product that we're building today is about recipes, it's really visual. So any, um, any reference that I'm gonna be looking at is going to be something that has a lot of visually forward aspects to it. And it's mostly e-commerce. So it's it's between recipe websites, um, any kind of e-commerce shopping experience that has, you know, imagery is like the priority there. Um, Airbnb is always a great example for things like that. So that's honestly um, the first lens in which I look at things. So it's interesting with Airbnb, 
they've gone so stark. I mean, everything here is white, and right. they really just let the imagery jump out, um, right. which is nice, but it's also almost lacking a little bit of personality to me. Um, I love Asana. I just think it's like such a great utility tool. It's not um, something that we are going to be emulating in our experience, but I just, I also like to look at things for page structure. You know, Asana has that vertical navigation. It has um, some nice panels that slide in and out. So I really like to look at that kind of um, interactivity as well. Um, Instacart is another one that I thought was interesting because again, it's, it's about food. Um, it's about imagery in the forefront. Um, so, and in, Instacart actually uses this kind of lighter green, um, but it, it works for them for here. Uh, um, blue Apron was another one mm -hmm. I thought about, again, because it's, it's using imagery and food, and they actually use blue, a darker yeah. blue, in a, in a pretty successful way. I think by them just being Blue Apron, they can kind of get away with it, right? Because they're, they're called Blue they're, Apron. They're putting yeah. in the word in that, so right. it kind of works for them. And they're also doing very, uh, like, a, a white palette Exactly. Right, very minimalist style. Exactly. I think another one that I like to, to look at is plated. Oh right? yeah. Plated I haven't, has, has another. Yeah, I definitely I can't think about what it looks like on the top of my head, but um, it's it's got like red they knew, they use red lettering. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So again, another thing I, I like to do is just kind of look at some of um, paradigms out in the in right. the ether. And like pa pattern libraries are very um, you know, the evolution of the way that we thought about patterns has, mm -hmm. has kind of taken on a new form because now we have design systems. And if you think about any product or project that you might be working on, you used to call it like a style tile. You used mm -hmm. to call it like a style library, mm -hmm. um, a pattern library. Um, essentially, they're all just a, a design system of some right. sort. Oh, yeah. Uh, somewhere you can like have a repository of all the different patterns that you're going to use mm -hmm. um, and take inventory essentially. If it's what drop downs do you have, uh, making sure that you're using these these drop downs the right way. So expressing rules, right? Like completely. That's, that's yes. really like your logo should be there. All your typefaces should be there. Yeah. That way, if you're not there, your other designers can implement the things and not, Absolutely. not create new work, right? Absolutely. And I mean, please, if you work with any development team, right. they're going to say, why are you making this drop down when we have another drop down pattern right. already in our repository? Like, do you have a reason for using two different drop downs? Right. It's, um, it's not only does it help time. So think about this when you're creating design systems, it's beneficial because you don't want to recreate work for other people. Mm -hmm. um, not only because it takes time to recreate things that are already created, mm -hmm. but also it creates inconsistencies in your design experience, right? You don't want to have two different buttons, two different drop downs. You have one single source of truth, which is your design system. Right. And hopefully everyone's just using that. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. And, and this is a good way to do that. At the, just like looking at these patterns that exist out there in the world. Yes, right? exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, great points. Um, the other kind of inspiration that I look at is then I, I do go to Dribble, and right. Dribble's you know again very fantasy world, um, but I do like to look at it just to kind of trigger um, some kind of inspiration. Usually, it, it just kind of launches me in in a direction, but I can't really borrow anything too um, critically from from Dribble just because it's not really that close to reality, but and I still Behance like it can be a great time. place too. Right? Oh my gosh, yes, yeah. Behance is an amazing place to do that as well. Um, awesome. All right. So, uh, I'm ruining everything. Um, let's talk about naming. Uh, you guys uh. gave me <clears throat> so many awesome names, and I picked Marinate um, because I think that we can play a lot with the words Marin 8. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, that I got really excited about this, um, and you know the logo that I came up with uh, definitely you know can use some finessing, but I think it's it's just a good place to start. And the reason why I also like Marinade is because I think about how people are going to be talking about this tool when it becomes more of a social aspect, and when people are thinking, um, oh, I'll just share that recipe that I have with you over Marinade. Right. 
Um, let it marinate. Yeah, let it marinate. Mm. So I think it can actually be a good verb, yeah. a good noun. Um, you know, think about obviously like how Google is now a verb that we what we yeah. all use. Right. Um, Lyft beautiful. or Uber like is it. is a verb. So um, I'll just marinate you that recipe. I think it's kind of catchy. So I love it. I'm no, digging that's it. That's great. Right? Um, <laughs> There's some good ones in there. There though. are some really good ones in there. Yeah. I loved Breaking Bread, which you just kind of like <laughs> casually said at the end, and I was like, that's a really good one. <laughs> Um, so there were some awesome ones. Thank you, everybody, for, for all of your suggestions. Um, and so our logo, so I have decided on the color, which is going to be this deeper green. Um, and I think that the color, I got excited about this color because it's not red or mm -hmm. yellow or orange or any of those um, other warm colors that we saw all of our con um, competitors having. But it's a deeper green, so it still feels to me, um, it still has this warm quality to me. Uh, still, to me, makes me hungry. Um, but, you know, again, is a little bit of a differentiator against the market. So here's our logo. Does anyone get this? Who, who gets it? Who knows what this is? Okay, it's a steak. I thought so. <laughs> I think we can play a little bit more with it in the future, but for yeah. now, we're gonna go with this. This is our um, site, it's called Marinate. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. So the next thing I have for you guys are um, our components. Uh, we were just talking about having a component library, how it's always important to start with with something. Mm -hmm. And so here I've just pulled for everybody and for, for ourselves as we're going to be working on this today, um, some color palettes, uh, some typography. So for H1s and um, for headers in general, I really like this serif font called Domine, which is a Google font. Yeah. And I wanted a serif that just evoked a little bit of, again, warmth and friendliness. Like this is a recipe app where you're going to be using this at home. Um, this is for yourself. I want it to be like warm and welcoming. So I like that the serif enables us to do that. And then using Montserrat as a sans serif for a lot of our body copy, um, I think is a nice pairing. I agree. I think I love pairing um, the sans serif with the serif, like mm -hmm. the, the, the tradition and classic nature of the serif font. Yeah. It just, it, it just for, makes me always really happy when I see that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so I do have, you know, a couple of components here that I'll, that I'll kind of talk to you guys about. So some are CTAs. Um, we have kind of like this big CTA for adding a recipe. And sometimes I also use a smaller primary CTA as well in different circumstances. Like this one is probably hmm. appropriate for modals. Right, you don't want to um, yell at people all the time. Right? Yeah, exactly. And for our secondary CTA, we're just going to have this little link here. Um, and then because um, tags are so important to us in this experience, I really had a lot of focus on tags. I wanted tags to evoke some color and, and some representation of the brand, but not be too overwhelming. So this would be our unselected tag and our selected tag. Right. And I'll explain why one has an X and one doesn't in a minute. So there's some really great comments on the color choice. So yeah, let's like talk about green it. Green and steak. Could maybe ah. make question mark, but also oh. like a green steak uh, mm -hmm. with the veggie veggie options, um, sure. organic. Santaji <laughs> um, uh, says the color makes me want to eat spinach, and that's a good thing. Okay, sure, I'll take it. Yeah, um, yeah. Beatrix says it's an elegant color. So you know, I, I do really like this green because the the green that we we saw in your examples. Yeah, the bright. Uh, it was a little weird. Yeah, you don't want like no. uh, some sort of no. like. Uh, nuclear green. No, definitely right? not. But this is like homey and right. um, feels like kind of rustic to me too. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we have some form fields here as well and then just looking at what a drop down looks like with um, some of our uh, check boxes. So looking at any, um, looking at all of our core components and I have done my due diligence and added everything to my yeah. styles or components palette, and you're gonna have to help me um, mm. figure out some of the symbol, the nuances with symbols, because yeah. I got a little confused, so we can talk about right. that too. So the, the assets panel is where you're gonna see all of these uh, definitions that you're making around your components. Uh, symbols have kind of evolved into components. Okay. And so uh, XD kind of calls them and classifies them components. Components, is the naming not convention. symbols. Okay. So, okay, it's okay. similar, right? Yeah. And then uh, now we have uh, component states. 
which is the evolution of that. So being able Super to- Super excited about that. Right, and this is, this is being able to attach a different type of visual um, representation of a button uh -huh. without creating so much clutter. Right. And I think we're gonna really love seeing that. Yeah. So we'll be able to demo that in a bit too. Yeah, I'm really excited because a lot of the elements on here are very stateful. Mm -hmm. And so having that additional ability to have Right. Um, states without making so many different buttons, assets. Buttons by nature are, right? And and a they lot are, of times yeah. we forget, like when we're doing quick mock-ups, that like buttons change states all the time. Mm -hmm. Granted, on mobile experiences, there's no hover state, so mm -hmm. we have to keep that in mind. Uh, but if we're thinking about a web experience, right. which we are, right. um, we are going to think about a hover state and what happens when you press a button, right? right. There's a state. Um, there's a press there's state. A press state. Yeah. You know, so there's focus states, there's press states. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about all those things a button is not just a button. There's right. many different phases of a button. Yep, yep, exactly. Awesome. So um, with that, I did design, um, let's see, one page. So I think from this page, we can look at all of the rest of the experiences mm -hmm. and design them together. Okay. So here we go. Here is our home page for our recipes. So we have our awesome veggie steak logo up in the mm. corner. Uh, we have our uh, profile access here where we can change our passwords, set account settings, and then in the future, when this grows to be something much more shareable and interactive, um, we can have different pages here so that we can have a My Recipes page, we can have a View All Recipes, a Discover Recipes, so yeah. having this kind of vertical nav um, enables us to do all of that. Love that. Um, I did have a... Um, header on the top here, and I just realized that it wasn't showing up on the screen, so I made it a little bit darker. I do like to have some kind of color differentiation right. sometimes to just, again, draw a delineation between the content of the page and kind of like the utility at the top of the page. Right. So we have a big each one here, my recipes. Um, we're gonna have to fill in all of these uh, assets with the real names right. for all the filters. Uh, so here's our filters, here's our search. Here's our selected um, tags. Here's our big juicy CTA to add another recipe. And then here are our um, recipe carts. So I wanna talk a little bit about how I got here. Um, and again, it goes back to inspiration, but it's, it's really about um, focused inspiration. So for example, when it comes to the cards, um, I, what I did was I actually pulled out a lot of different recipe cards from the different resources. Um, I actually noticed that cards are kind of going out of style. You're seeing that there's a lot less cards and more just kind of mm -hmm. um, uh, components. Like floating. Floating, component, yeah. yeah. Which I'm down with, um, but I did still want a card feel for, for this particular experience. Yeah. But I do think that's an interesting direction that UI is, is taking these days. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm curious here in like the proportion of the image to the rest of the content. You know, what kind of data do we want to say down down below? Um, you know, for a lot of the recipe sites, they they have some kind of description. They have a title of the recipe. They have some description. They have mm -hmm. a time of how how long it will take you. Right. Um, I didn't really want any of that because that's not why I'm building this tool. I'm building this tool so I can easily find my recipes. The timing of a recipe is not as important to me as being able to find the one I'm looking right. for. Right. So uh, in terms of the data points that we wanna have in the bottom, it's it's really just basically the, the title of the recipe itself. Right, and you're also thinking MVP, and that yes. maybe that yeah, for sure. time can be something later. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, and you could also maybe say like, you know, from so-and-so's collection, right. you know, if you were sharing recipes with someone else. Um, and then for proportion, uh, we look at, you know, the golden rule. Um, which I know you guys have talked about on the stream before, yes. but I always think about, you know, what that ratio is um, of one part of the card to the other. So I guess if we were looking at, because our cards are going to be vertical, so we'd basically be looking at it like this. And it's basically, you decide whatever, um, you know, based on the width that you that you want, based on your grid. Um, we got So we got the oh, chat and win happening right. right now. So just quick pause, we'll come right back. But if you can't think of anything to say, uh, tell us what you love that's green. Yeah. And maybe it doesn't have to be food. It could be other things. <laughs> Go ahead and 
comment away so we can see who wins. And uh, yeah, I, I love that. All right, so we're back. We're back. Um, keep chatting away. We're gonna we're gonna find out who wins in a second. But I was saying um, maybe not money. Maybe uh, I like. Um, well, it's hard to think of green on the spot of things that I love. I like broccoli, Tur and I'm not afraid to like broccoli. I love broccoli. I'm not ashamed of it. Brussels sprouts are also one of those things that I didn't start liking until I was like older. They're tough. Right? Yeah, they're, little, they're hit or miss. Because they're, they can be kind of bitter. Yeah. And if you like, I love roasting. So roasted Brussels sprouts. Those are good. With like brown sugar and spice. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So good. That sounds amazing. Bring out amazing. the umami in the in the Brussels. That sounds amazing. Oh man, um, I'm a big big Sergio fan. Sergio said moss. Baby moss Yoda. Is nice. <laughs> wow. Green Jolly Ranchers. Apples and pears. Uh, uh, tree, <laughs> trees. <laughs> <laughs> trees. Are Low cool. hanging fruit. <laughs> and congratulations to Julie Crossman. You won a. Uh, Thirty dollar digital gift card to Moo, and Ooh. if you haven't heard of Moo, Moo is just an amazing place for you to get your uh, business cards made. And I recommend going to uh, using Adobe XD to uh, create your designs for Moo, customizing them, or you can use the uh, the predefined uh, designs in Moo, which are also great. Um, but that way you could uh, you know represent yourself a little bit more professionally. I think it's a great idea. And if you didn't win, don't worry, moo.com slash Adobe Live. Go on there now and you can get a 15% off. So um, it's a win-win. And if you um, need business cards, oh, the only place I go is Moo. Oh, I love Moo. For business cards, we're gonna order our holiday cards there for our oh, company cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just we, transcending we the business cards. You can do mm -hmm. other things too. Mm -hmm. And holiday cards for companies are also really important. They are. I mean, we have to let our clients know that we are appreciative right. and thinking of them and, you know. I like the small business cards. What do you think about the small ones? Do you not like those? You I don't know. Yeah, a little different about them? Well, they just, like, if you have a stack of business cards yeah. and you have one that's like an odd size, kind of like falls out or... Also, QR, card, QR codes on oh, business cards. Oh, that's what, what do you think? Um, where would it go? Like, what's... It goes to, like, your portfolio or your company website? So you, you go on your phone then? Yeah. You lock it on your weird? phone? Is it weird? I think it's kind of cool. It's kind of It's kind of cool, but I feel like it's kind of... It's gimmicky. Gimmicky, right? Like, like I want to do it, but I don't want to do it. Yeah. Right. Also, I mean, business cards in general, like, the, the amount of times that I actually have my business cards on me when I need them I is know. literally 1% of well, the time. Well, Moo's going to change that for you. <laughs> yes, they will. Yeah. And so, congratulations, Julie. You are the uh, proud winner of some uh, great, Sweet, great deals. Sweet, Julie. Yeah. You're lucky. So you were so you were in the middle of something before we have the chat and win, which is the golden ratio. The golden and, ratio. And, and this is, I feel like, in anything, any kind of art or design that you create, just kind of look at it and remind yourself, right? Yeah, it's super super helpful because um, sometimes you can get wrapped up in proportions and like how much of how much space should I give for everything? And so the golden I love the golden ratio because it just kind of answers that right. for you. Yeah. And so it's basically um, one. So you you identify which side you want to be the larger side or the mm -hmm. smaller side. So let's say we knew we wanted the image to be this big. Um, we would divide that by 1.6 to get the size of the, the bottom part of the card and vice versa. Right, and it just takes care of your spacing for you. It like does. If, you, if you're the kind of designer that maybe have a problem with spacing mm -hmm. and you just for some reason can't get it down, just follow the golden ratio yeah. and, and let it do its job. I know. And, and you'll be fine. <laughs> it makes you so will easy. be fine. Yeah. It'd be cool if they had some kind of like quick golden ratio. Ooh, plug in? Yeah. Ooh, plug in. Yes. Do it. Okay. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that could be like a, a, a little machine learning like quick yeah. algorithm to like right? get your stuff aligned mm -hmm. to, a, to a grid a little better. Totally. Right? Or even like with type, it's like, okay, I need I need line height. Right. What's the, the the best golden ratio line height for you know eighteen pixel font? There probably is a plugin for it. Let me let me search around for it while you're while you're designing. Okay, you guys in the there, chat. There check are it out too. if, you, if anybody if anybody right? knows any good plugins, also just like recommend some 
great plugins for spacing, line spacing. I, I'm pretty sure there are some. Let me, yeah. Let me take a look around. Yeah, go for it. I mean, I typically just use Spotlight Search to do all my math calculations. Me um, too. <laughs> how, how do you get there? I I go here. Oh. I don't know the space. I don't know Com the command. Command space bar. Commands. Ah! It's the best shortcut because okay. you can find right. everything on your I know. computer. I know. Okay. Sorry. Plus do math. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's like kind of how I got to the design for the card. Um, and then the other elements uh, that I really was focusing on, honestly, were our, were our tags and our filters. And so I, I really just want you guys to see my process because what I do is I try to, I rack my brain for every site that I've used where I know that um, the the interaction or component that I'm thinking about is is a heavy part of that product, right. and so I again I really like real live experience um, uh, references as opposed to um, you know fantasy references right. because I like to see the interaction. So for example, this is from Adobe Stock. Um, you guys have a great use of tags, and this is a hover state. Oops. Oh, that's Ooh, my screen. your screen. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was confused for a second. Um, yeah, so on Adobe Stock, you can see how this is how they treat their hover state versus just regular filters. And I like that, again, because it's a, it's a focus on stock imagery right. that um, your filters or your, your tags don't take up that much attention. Right, and so these patterns, again, we talked about this yesterday. Don't reinvent the wheel also. Yes, for fun, for, for being the designer <laughs> of your patterns. Right. Like these, there are some really great patterns that have been tested and, and researched and uh, used widely across very successful platforms. Yeah, and that's what people are used to using. I yeah. mean, you don't want to reinvent something unless there's a, uh, there's a distinct reason to do that, right. unless something yeah. is actually broken. If it's like some brand new experience that no one else is doing, like maybe that, then maybe that takes it. But right. yeah, use, reuse, and you're gonna change the feel and look and the, the, the use case, no, yeah. it's all changing. Exactly, exactly. Oh, Muhammad says a good range is from 1.3 times to 1.8 times the font size. There you go. Yeah, I usually use about 1.6, which falls right in, in there. And, and you go with what feels right, right? Like in, when it comes down to it in that range, what mm -hmm. feels right for the font? Oh, yeah, Because yeah, exactly. fonts are different, mm -hmm. right? Like So you can, it's hard to calculate what font works with totally. which pairing what ran at. Totally, yeah. totally. Um, and so, yeah, so what I do is I just look again at, at a bunch of different examples that I've come across um, that, you know, make me think about how I want to approach our designs here. So with all that, um, I think we can get into designing some of the experience. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we know that we have, let's see, where am I? Do, to do, to do. So we know that we have our website, our homepage designed, and I think this is a good way to now start bringing in some of the other page elements. Um, I typically like to start with like the next core experience. And so if we look back at our wireframes, I think the next experience that I want to design is probably gonna be the end result. I wanna see what that recipe page yeah. looks like um, at the end. And I think it's a good complement to the first page that I designed. So we'll just grab that and bring it down to where we have our... And so there is a question in the chat about the 1.3 by um, and 1.8 like mm -hmm. measurement of like, um, what does that mean? Um, and it's basically just like the um, the way to calculate the the spacing is uh, it's a ratio. So it's it's based off the, the golden ratio, or just like um, the 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 way that your eye is going to separate content. Um, it's just it's hard to explain. It's just like the way that our brains work in, in terms of um, what we expect on on space for spacing to be. Mm -hmm. um, I think Santaji did a great job at explaining it in the chat too. Um, it's it's just the way that you optically adjust for things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. So when I'm looking at, this is gonna be the heart of the experience, right? This is your cooking and you wanna be referencing your recipe while you're doing it. Um, so what I think I'd like to do here, we have, we have two components of this page. We have um, the actual recipe itself 
And then we kind of have all the metadata, which is like our the name of our recipe, the tags we're using, et cetera, et cetera. I would like the recipe itself to be the focal point of the page and the metadata to be a supporting part of that. Yeah. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is actually divide the page in thirds and make the recipe two thirds of the page and the metadata one third of the page and just kind of see how that feels. So we're gonna use our little handy um, finder, 1366 divided by three is 455. So then I basically, I mean, I'm sure there's way more sophisticated ways of doing this, but <laughs> this is how I do it. Um, so I make a box that is 455 uh, pixels wide and I kind of just put that across the page and then I will drag a um, ruler over here, a guide right. to mark it. And we're just gonna do this a little bit quick. So now it tells me that um, my recipe is going to go all the way over to there. See, designers can do math. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can <laughs> totally do math. Um, and so now this is gonna be some kind of image, whether it's pulled in from a URL or whether it's a recipe itself. Actually, we can just, why don't we just do this together? Let's do it. Okay. So let's go to, so you can see where I got my um, steak from. Where are we going right now? We are going to, what was I just doing? Oh, the New York Times. Do I still have it up? Yes, I do. Okay, so let's say that I am on the New York Times. This is literally a recipe that I have printed out on computer right. paper. Um, this is part of the problem. This is right? part of my problem. <laughs> this is a really good dish, by the way. <laughs> um, and so what I would do here, literally, is take a screenshot because I don't, I don't care about formatting. I don't care about any of that. I just want right. a place to document everything. Right. Take, literally take a screenshot, go back to XD, and throw that guy in there. So I want to give it a little bit of shape. Um, you know, right now it's like I don't, I don't really know where this is. Um, I don't really know what kind of like component this is. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to give it. Um, I'm going to give some kind of um, like shadow, maybe, so that it's like sitting on top of something, and then we'll give it some background. And I have all my uh, color scales in there, and then we'll move this to the back. That work. Yeah, so sometimes when oh. you, it, it creates a, um, gotcha. like a mask. Oh, I see what happens. Yeah, so when you create a shape and then you drop an image into it, it will create a, a mask, so which is a little different to edit. Um, there are ways around um, like just bringing it in um, separately. Mm -hmm. So you could, yeah, you could totally do that. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have our little recipe here. Mm -hmm. And then I think, uh, let's get rid of that border. Um, and now let's talk about what we would call it. So right. right here we would we would be naming the recipe and let's use our, um, I think we're going to use our header and we're going to call it, what was it? Garlicky, garlicky lime. Garlicky chicken thighs with lime. Chicken thighs with scallions and lime. And then we make it this guy so we can drag it. I love it. Love it. And so the style is already picking up the line height that I had determined um, ahead of time. So 32 so, with 50 pixel line height. And so for um, like recipe or like names that are a little long, so like we're missing the lime. Um, oh. How, like do you truncate or, or what's the um, Great rule? question. So what I think we'll do is, because I do like having some kind of visual control here, um, I think what we'll do in the editing experience is actually give a maybe a character limit mm -hmm. or a truncation. Although I don't really, you know, I, I don't really want this to become a, fi a fifty right. word sentence. I feel like three lines is good. Three lines is good. Right. Yeah. So we can figure out what I would do with my development team is figure out how many characters is the maximum. Right. And then in the edit experience, set a limit on that. Um, text field yeah. to a maximum of X amount of characters. Yeah, and I would actually like to plug a plugin. Ooh. Um, so I was uh, I was uh, in Adobe working on plugins, and uh, one of the plugins that 
I was uh, like lucky enough to witness being built um, was a plugin called Copy That. Ooh. And for those that aren't aware of, uh, of Copy That plugin, it's coming soon, but essentially it is a way for you to um, create text fields and have um, your, your copywriter put in text without editing your XD document. And I believe that should be in oh, the, 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 the store super soon, um, but it was a team that was here at, X, at XD um, making plugins and I was part of that experience. That's so cool. Yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for if anybody's out there that's interested in like copyright, or I'm sorry, yeah, copywriting uh -huh. and um, being able to share with copywriters, uh, it's a great way to um, make that a streamlined process. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I want that. Plugins, um, plugins can be used in a variety of ways, right? Oh yes, definitely. And, and just so you know, if you've um, been ex exploring the plugins, um, there's there's more features in the plugins ex exploration. So you can now search uh, keywords a little bit, a lot more easily. You can browse and manage your plugins a lot easier now. So that's something that was updated in the last um, XD update. So oh. just to kind of plug the plugins panel, it's really great. Well, I love that it's so accessible too. It's completely right. it's it's all integrated there. completely mm -hmm. into your thing. Um, I'm not sure why I am trying to add a text box. And oh, is it because my text Oh, there's no border. Is, I know. Is white. Bojana, hi. Thanks for joining us. And with the, the chat is still going. I love thank you for, oh, yeah, for, chat. for Michael. Um it, it there's it is really hard and and to, to figure out like the spacing and like a, a, a fast and easy way. I mean, some people are better at doing it just with eyeballing it, you know. And mm -hmm. um I'm kind of. If you can. All the power to you. I'm kind of more of like an eyeballer kind yeah. of person. Like, um, especially when um, I'm kind of the designer developing developer the, in that situation. You are. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of like I, I I try to try to use the the ratio when I get stuck sometimes when things just don't look right. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times that's the case. Gotcha. <laughs> so do, doing your math is important. <laughs> Okay, it's taking me a really long time to get this, but I think I got it. No, it's cool. Um, all right, so now we have, so I added an image here because a lot of times these recipes are probably just gonna be like screenshots or photos, and so I wanna be able to add some kind of imagery here since recipes is such a visual aspect as well. So I think in the upload experience, we'd probably give them the opportunity to add a photo in addition to the core recipe itself and we would need something for the the, um, the card on mm -hmm. the home page. So I think that the photo also has has dual purpose there. Right. Um, so I would want to add a note. So um, let's see. I do want this to be in my body text style, and I want to tell myself um, to saute the chicken um, first, then add everything to pan and put in oven at 450 for 20 minutes. Um, this is a really good recipe. And and I like to do little notes like this to myself because um, sometimes I've, I've made this before, I know how I like it, and I don't need to read everything, right. I just maybe need to reference a couple of the details here. So, but it does look like I don't have line spacing on my style for body text. So 16, I'm guessing it's gonna be um, around, I'm guessing it's gonna be around 21, but let's, let's see, 25. Okay, yeah, and that looks pretty nice. Um, so this is how I would imagine seeing it, and then I would wanna see the tags. So which tags was this a part of? Um, let's see, I have unselected tags here. Um, are these old? These might be old, actually. Here's my new ones. I changed my mind a lot when I designed. Yeah, and that's something that is is happens all the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, and I, I keep them too, even though they're older, like I still keep them. Yeah, um, I know. It's, it's I don't like to delete and, anything. <laughs> it's good and bad, right? Because then I'm like, yeah. wait, that's old. Right, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I actually thought I deleted all this, and maybe I missed them. Um, so anyway, uh, is there a good way to hmm. take a list of content that I have and like populate it? So let's say I have, Yeah. okay, because I have all these tags and all these filters, um, 
but how do I like easily change the name of each tag? Do I have to do it manually in here or is there? Oh, so you're saying like being know. able to change those names in like the panel. Yeah, something like that. Right. Um, currently that is not something okay. that is supported, uh, being able to change those names um, outside of the actual designed uh, Got it. thing. All good. Um, and I'll say, I'll add another tag with chicken thighs because I would do that. Because um, sometimes I want chicken, but I also have specifically chicken thighs in the fridge. And sometimes you just can't make the same recipes with chicken breasts as you can with chicken thighs. Right. So there is something that just kind of popped in my mind that you would be able to do. It has to be structured before. Mm -hmm. um, but if you create like a text document, you could have all of your names in a text document and then drop them into um, like your uh, repeat grid and those actually can then cascade into your different buttons. I wanna try this later. Yes. Okay. That sounds very exciting. Yeah. I'll uh, set that up, how about that? Okay. Cool. Oh my God, excited. Um, awesome, so let's see, how do we get, yeah. All right, so we're getting somewhere with uh, the visual aspect of um, our, our recipe view itself. Here's the thing. I have two different states for um, tags. And the reason why one of them has an X and one of them doesn't is um, because when we have tags in here, they're not only selected, but I need to be able to unselect them. And to me, if I went with this paradigm of just having clicking to unselect, it still lives there. And in this recipe view, if I'm, if I don't want a tag to be associated with it anymore, I don't want to see it anymore. Okay. And so I really want to have these X's on these tags specifically so that I can get rid of them and, and they can go away. So do you want to learn states right now? Real yes. Quick? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So which is your primary state, your, your, your master state? Um, so the, to do that, you have to go here and then find where it lives, right? There you go. Okay. And then so what you're going to do now is um, it's a component. So you're going to add where it says um, on the right panel under component masters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to add a state, and we're going to call it a new state. Mm -hmm. It could be a hover state, but right now we're going to do it a new state. And say um, with an X, is this the one you want to do with an X now? No, let's make this, this is different. Let's make this one, um, you just click it and, it and it turns green. It turns green. Okay, yeah. so call it green. Okay. Okay, now um, you have that one selected. Yeah. So then um, how about you um, edit that one? So I edit it. Mm -hmm. I just like ungroup. No, I can't ungroup no, it. No, no, change the okay. change the uh, the color to the color that you like. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now go back to it. And uh, hold on. Yeah. Okay. There you go. And now select the one above it. <gasps> Look at that. And then go now go to it again. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's pretty incredible. Yeah. So that, it's that, like a life changer. That's step one of, okay. of doing the states. Um, and there's 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 more to it, um, but as we go, we'll learn more. Okay. Cool. That's incredible. Yeah. And so if you go to your design that you actually have it in, in context. Yes. Um, that that will um, that? be reflected. So then now you can. I don't know if these are the same component. So. Wait, no, we, it was the same component because we went there. No. Why? Oh. Oh. It just oh made... no, because we went we went from the other one, uh, the one that said American. That was the master. Uh, let's go. Let's go back to it. Actually. Where? This one. Yeah. Um, oh, was it this one? So those one with the X. Oh yes, this was it. This yeah, was the one we did. Yeah, that's the one we did. Okay. Okay, so we didn't do the X one. Yeah, so you'd have to swap those ones out. Well, the X is so the X is different. So let's talk about this a little bit. Yeah. Um. So the reason why. Okay. So last night I, I did a little homework and I designed um, some of screens just so I could wrap my head around a couple things. And I wanna talk to you guys about it because there were some dis like interaction decisions that I had to make. Um, so when it comes to, let's just get this screen out of here. So this, what is, this is what we would be looking at as um, the recipe upload. Um, so mm -hmm. you, you click the modal to upload your recipe. You saw I added a screenshot. So now here's our screenshot, and now here's the experience where we're going to be adding a cover photo, adding a recipe name, mm -hmm. adding our notes, and adding our tags. This is where it gets a little com complicated. 
Um, we love complicated. We right? love complicated. <laughs> I mean, we have to think about every every mm -hmm. instance. Yeah. Um, you know, we were talking about yesterday about like being a generalist, and it's like as you're right. designing this, you have to be an not only a UX designer and a UI designer, but an interaction designer. Yes. Um, you have to think about what what happens now. So let's say that I um, have all these tags here. So my thought is that as you upload every single recipe, you're gonna, always gonna see the same exact tags in the same exact categories because we have to have structure. We are going to launch with a default set of tags, but we have to allow the users to add their own tags. If you can't add your own tags, this product will not be um, will not be useful to you. So I need to allow a user to add their own tag for every single category. So, right. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So it gets tricky. Um, the reason why I don't want to have. So let's dial back. We also have two different kinds of tags. We have the tags with the X, which you saw in the recipe view. Right. And we have the tags that don't have access here because my thought here is that it's just going to be, you know, on default, nothing's going to be selected. Mm -hmm. You're going to hover over these and you're going to select the ones that, ap that apply to you, right? right? Um, I guess this wasn't a component, but so that's why these don't have X's because you don't want these to disappear. Don't. Right. You, you, want to, I mean? you want to deselect them. You want to desel you want to select them or deselect right. them. But you don't want them to disappear. So and they can't you, have X's. And when you add, are you able to type in your own tags or, or are you able to select from like a predetermined list of tags? So you great question. And you should be able to add your own tags. Cool. Customize your own tags. Um, because it's this, your personal. This is for you. Right. This is for you. It's how you organize this. Right. right. Exactly. Okay. Th that is like the crux of what this product is for. So I don't want to add too many limitations. You have to add some limitations. So like we're not going to let them add a, a different section. Makes sense. But within the sections, they can add their own tags. So, so how does that work? So from an XD perspective, yeah. you need to have two different components. Yes. Because they are two different yeah. components. And my developers would say, why do some tags have X's and other tags don't? And I would have to justify it. Right. You can't like. Development teams can't just like go willy nilly building all these things, and right. you know you have to have a reason why something is going to be different. True, and that's so. There's a difference between an engineered experience and a designed experience, right? Like if you just let the engineers make those decisions mm -hmm. without you explaining, mm -hmm. things can get a little weird. Oh yeah, they probably know? wouldn't even think about the X's, right. and you know, it would all be the same. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Like less work. Hey, CSS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they would say it's less work, and I would have to you, as a designer, again, you can't just say it needs to be this way. You have to justify it. Um, engineers will p constantly push back. That's part of their job. Why? 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 Awesome. And as a user, you have to, I mean, as a designer, you have to represent the user and the usability needs. Right. There you go. Yeah. So the way that we are going to have um, add tags here is I'm thinking that when you hover over a section of tags, uh, you'll have a little plus sign that pops up. So I don't want a plus sign at all over the place because it might get busy. But as you're hovering over a section, It'll pop up. And I want to show you guys an experience in Asana that does this because, again, especially for interaction design, I have to experience something in the real world in order to know what, like, what's going on um, or what to do. So in Asana, um, I love the way they handle adding text. So right now you can add something to a project. So let's say it's my new project. So that's an existing tag, right? Um, but then they have this nice little hover experience that just hovers over the section um, and you can add a new tag. Um, my new tag. Right. So I checked a lot of different resources and this is this is my process when I'm de when I'm designing interactions. Um, I need to, I need to go in and feel different different experiences. Trello, I used um, I experienced the tagging in Trello. I I go through a ton of different resources in my head where they use tags, and I liked Asana's experience the best, and I feel like it fits my needs, and I modify it based on my needs, but. Of course, it's always helpful to, to see how something is existing that's already been built, especially with your development team. So you can say if they want um, details into how an interaction is going to behave, mm -hmm. you can give them a reference. Developers love that. If you say this, go to this site and this page and you can see how I want this interaction to work, right. they'll be so appreciative because that's like 
they're you're just helping them figure it out. Right, and, th and that's like, if, if especially if you're doing that like rapid kind of um, uh, like development process where you're 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 developing designing while they're developing, mm -hmm. um, you you could prototype it to a point where they can like interact with it, or you can show them what it looks like in, in an experience that you're referring to. That's right? the thing, like you know, the di there's a lot of different teams and processes. I, I, my background is startups and lean product teams where you have designers doing a million gazillion things. And sometimes we don't have time to prototype every single hover state and interaction and, and show it to developers or do functional specs where we outline everything. I mean, sometimes we just don't have time. Mm -hmm. And so in a lean, rapidly prototyping or rapidly uh, building um, environment and team structure, this is a perfectly acceptable thing to do. Right. And I would even pair, I would rather pair with a developer, meaning I work side by side with them to get the interaction right, than to go through these great lanes to build an interactive prototype just to give it to them to show them what I'm talking right, about. Right, right, right. Um, so I like to really, less, less presentation, more collaboration. Mm -hmm. Um, Franco had a question, is there a way to make a button resize following the text inside it, keeping the original padding? I actually had the same question, Franco, so thank you for asking that. Do you know? So, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of a, how you build the button, um, and that is kind of depending on, um, so like... Let's so look you at could, the save recipe. Right, so look at the save recipe and like, so zoom into that one. And so if you take that one and just look at like centered. this, yeah, so the text needs to have its um, Sorry. centered. And then, so what we want to look at actually is the, the, the function responsive resize. So this is something okay. that has been um, thought of by the XD team a lot. Um, so you would uh, select the toggle and turn it on because right now it's on auto. Do um, I group it first? And it's right here. Um, uh, yes, if I you group it. if you could, okay. yeah. Um, Wait, so I thought the toggle was on. Now it's off. So, so turn it on. Yeah, turn there you on. go. Yeah, and okay. then so it's on auto, right? Yeah. So let's go to manual. Okay. Right, and so now we look at the different options within it. So cool. this is how it's going to bound mm -hmm. to the space above to left and to right. Mm -hmm. So right now, if we um, like take the whole button and stretch it. Eee. Oh. Right. It's so, already centered. So it's centered, and it's and it's great because we have fixed width fixed height so it's oh. actually on 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 auto it, it it's using auto functions right now okay um so control command z and so if you look at um select save recipe the text the text okay and then uh, go to manual and see what, what what's the settings nothing so it's on fixed width oh fixed height so that means that the the text size is not going to change and that's what we want right we don't want the text size to change we want that to stay um, hope that makes sense so far. I think he wants, I think you want the text size change, right, Franco? Button resize, following the text inside it. Following the text. Oh, so then you would you would uh, take the, the fixed height and then delete that or unselect it and then take the fixed width and unselect that. Oh. Okay. And, okay. Then, and then go back to that and then. So I would want to do that, yeah. So, that's pretty freaking cool. So that's that's how you would do it. So it's it's about um, grouping the object first, mm -hmm. and then controlling every object inside of it to make sure that it is what you want it to do. So it's really defining that before you build that component. Gotcha. Out. And so, what if I? It doesn't look quite vertically centered. Is right. there a way? So the the responsive resize is like not a hundred percent gonna. Got it. There's but it's a, not about. It. Any controls. It's, it's going to get you really, really close. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of it is just like uh, adjusting it a little bit more to, to your uh, to your liking. Okay. Um, so that's generally how, how you're going to get there. Got right? it. Awesome. So it's it's mainly about um, controlling your responsive resize with buttons and all that stuff. Awesome. And then thinking about how that can work with states. Mm -hmm. um, like ideally, like you're not going to create a bunch of different button sizes in your experiences anyways. Usually like you have maybe two three maybe maximum, mm -hmm. right? And those, you can easily manage them through states, mm -hmm. right? And then you can have like auto animate Sweet. in states. Oh. So I'll show you that in a sec too. Okay, yeah, we'll get awesome. Into that. And we still have, uh, we still have 25 minutes until we uh, look at your portfolio well, I'm excited. Um, submissions and we'll review that. And then we have some more working time. So we still got some time to do some stuff. Great, yeah. awesome.
Yeah, we do. And I definitely want to prototype this. Yeah. Are you going to help us with that? No. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, wait, I want to I want to make sure we're answering Franco's yeah. question because he's clarifying now. If I change the text to do save recipe to my list, I was wondering if there's a way for the button to grow. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, so the button to grow with the Yeah, so if we mm. make the if we make the copy longer, he wants the button to expand. To, button to expand with it. Let me experiment with that. I, yeah. I, I, I have a feeling that it's possible, but um, I haven't tried that in a while. So okay. keep designing and sure. I'll play with it and we'll see. Sounds good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's go. That's a really good question, Franco. I need that too for all of my tags and stuff. So let's get him to work. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So now, so we were talking about adding tags uh, to the editing experience. So my thought is that when you would hover over a section, um, you would get a little edit. Uh, button that comes up, and we just had looked at that in Asana. So what happens now is if you click this button, um, you get a form field, and it says add a tag, and the form field will always come beneath the last row of tags. So you have to think about all these rules, right? Even if there's only one tag here, um, the form field is going to go below, and you, and again, you just, the, you have to be structured about the interaction decisions that you're making. So then, let's say we start typing, um, and then we'll have some kind of drop down here that says create new tags. You create a new tag, and voila, you have a new tag. So that's the interaction that I'm thinking about for um, the adding tags experience in the editing. So um, that's that. Now let's go back to the adding, let's go back to the um, recipe viewing because this is, this is something else. So um, I already actually cheated and designed this too. Because oh, more power to <laughs> <laughs> Because sometimes it's easier to think about things um, when I have heads down time. But there was a tricky interaction here. So this is the this is a screen I designed for um, for viewing your recipe, right? So you have your recipe on the side. Uh, you have this um, hover cl to close. So if if you hover over this, this is basically just a full screen modal. Um, again, because I want viewing a recipe to be really a quick and easy thing. So if you want to view it and then close it, uh, you just hover over here and there's a close. Uh, we have some metadata here about um, the date that the recipe was added. We have our instructions. And then I think when you hover over this section, you should be able to edit the instructions. So I really want the constant editing and customizing to be as easy and accessible as possible. I don't want, you know, to create like a whole edit experience. I just want you to be able to go in quickly and edit. So. Um, we have our editing here, and then now we have our tags. So here's all the tags that this particular recipe is assigned to. What if we want to add tags? This brings up actually a pretty complicated or sort of complicated interaction decision uh, because we still want to stay within the paradigm of the different categories we have. So can we use the existing editing or adding tag experience that we just introduced in the um, edit experience or the upload experience. And we really can't because here I'm not keeping the construct of the categories. I could keep the construct of the categories. However, it would just get too long. Um, because when I'm looking at a recipe, I don't want to see all of the categories that every tag belongs to. I just want to see the tags. So because of that, we have to actually introduce or think about how to allow them to add tags here. I wonder if anyone in the chat has ideas about how to do this. And while you think about your ideas, I will share with you my approach. Um, so. The way I'm thinking about this is we would actually have um, a full screen, or not a full screen, but a modal. And in that modal, we would be sh the modal would be showing, so I'm just gonna lock this so it doesn't move. Um, in that modal, we'd be showing, whoops. Let's lock that background too. Okay, so the modal now is actually going to show us all of the tags and all the sections. Right, so we're just gonna use our imagination 
and repeat. And it's gonna show us the tags that are on and the tags that are off. And then in here, um, as a user, I'm gonna be able to hover over and use that same adding tag pattern that we just um, introduced, inspired by Asana, and we're gonna do it here. But it's gonna be in this modal experience that we can actually add a tag that belongs to a category. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have a few different experiences here and we can just kind of now take a step back and, and look at them. Um, so we also have this add recipe experience. So again, let's take it back to the beginning. We have a recipe page. Let's walk through a flow. And this is what would be so much fun to prototype. Um, we're gonna add a recipe, right? So when you add a recipe, again, we want it to be really simple. Um, I'm thinking a full screen modal would come up and we have the X here to, to get out of it quickly. And we have three options. We have this drag and drop to upload an image. We have a CTA to manually enter text and another CTA to enter a URL. So if you literally just drag and drop an image like that screenshot I took from the New York Times, um, it would then populate into here, right? So now we're in the um, recipe um, upload experience. And here, if you wanted to cancel and go back um, to the home page, you would just cancel here. When you're able to save it, you save it here. And then in the meantime, you add a cover photo, you add a recipe name, you add any notes you have, and you add all of your tags. Then you save the recipe, and let's give them a success modal. So we would say added garlicky chicken thighs with scallion and lime. And you have the satisfaction as a user, a verification that what you did was just recognized by the, by the service and the satisfaction of seeing, um, you know, your new recipe uploaded. We'll show them the cover photo and, and you can see it now or you can just X out and go back to your homepage. You also have to think as a designer um, about people who don't have cover photos. So our entire site is built around um, having this, this imagery for every single recipe you have. You may not have a really nice image to go with it. And so one thing that I would do is, as like a lead designer on this project is start to design some um, blank states for photos. I wouldn't, I would never want to prohibit somebody from uploading a recipe if they don't have a cover photo, right. because that would be really frustrating to a user. It's like, I, I yeah. don't care about a cover photo. I just want to upload my recipe. So instead I would provide a, a couple different, um, maybe some Ill illustrative right. uh, blank states that have um, some of our brand colors so That's that even point. if they don't have a photo, they still have some kind of imagery that fits within our brand that brings some color to their page and lets them move on with their business. Yeah, and that's the tricky part about like food related experiences is photography mm -hmm. and, and how do you source those photos? Cause like not everyone's kitchens have the best lighting. Oh my God, yeah, I know. I know my, yeah. Mine doesn't like- Mine is I, terrible. I create like, sometimes I think like beautiful dishes and then like my lighting's a little like warm and yeah. low, yeah. which is how I like it. Right. But it doesn't photograph the greatest. Right. So I go to take a photo, I'm like, hmm, yeah. it's okay. Right. I'm not gonna share this. Totally. But for your own reference, it could work though, right? Yeah, it's, for your own reference, mm -hmm. it's it's good enough, Snap I think. Snap a photo of your own if you want to, after it's done cook, after you're done cooking it. Totally, maybe? totally. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I, I don't get excited, even if I know I have a recipe in my cookbook that I love, if it doesn't have a photo, mm -hmm. it's like hard for me to get excited yeah. about it. We're, I'm so, yeah. um, you know, image driven yeah. that I and rely on it. On a side note, have you ever eaten blindfolded? No. Hmm. I haven't either. Have you? There's a, I mean, there's a <laughs> restaurant here in SF that, that is an experience. What? Where, yeah, um, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it, but it's, it's uh, yeah, you eat blindfolded. I could have gone there last night. You don't see it. I know. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I should have. I should have given you a tip on. I just eating. missed my only opportunity. Wait, to where eat did you eat last night? In my hotel. Okay, well, I'm sure it has good food. It's it fancy. Did. It did. It did have very good food. 
I actually ordered like four different dishes. That's how you do it, <laughs> yeah. right? You're doing research? <laughs> and the name for research? Okay. <laughs> I like to ask for half portions because I like to try a lot of things. Oh, totally. <laughs> I need options. Like that's why I like like tapas is like yeah. one of my favorite yes. is like just give me a lot of options. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I always like to have complete meals. You need the protein, the yes. vegetable. And, and the then the, the guilty pleasure starch, mm -hmm. which for me last night was mac and cheese. So, but I had to have we were talking vegetable about and protein. Yes. Uh, did you have and dessert? they had it on the menu. No, but then I really wished I did. Yeah, those are always like sometimes it's a good thing you didn't. But it's I like, know mm, hotels are yeah. hard because like you have no secret chocolate stash, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like you do in your own <laughs> kitchen, uh, or like I do. The secret chocolate stash. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Nicholas was asking if the golden spacing works for all elements or just text. It works for all elements. Thanks, everywhere. Um, and just to answer your question about the button responding to the text that you type oh, yeah. into it, mm -hmm. it is not yet something that is supported by XD. Um, I was just like, looking into the forums, um, and it's something that is being worked on. So uh, I think the more that you request things, uh, the community is really great at responding to what you want. Um, so that's a great. That's a really, really great um, addition to what XD can do, and I think we'll be doing in the future, mm -hmm. is um, making your uh, buttons respond, because that's a little bit more like adding CSS into your design. Interesting. Um, but it's something that I think is is in, on the um, on the horizon. Yeah. And I think one thing that you requested was adding arrows at the end of lines. I did. <laughs> which is another thing that's in the works. Yeah, so. is it? Yeah. Yeah, I was so confused because, um, you know, when you, um, I like to do a lot of like quick flows. So if you guys can see my straight line down here, um, I was looking for a way to actually communicate that the line is going from left to right by adding an arrow. And I couldn't figure out how to do that. And so I chatted with Adobe's customer service, who is very, very responsive and friendly. Yeah. Um, and gave me some workarounds. Yeah. And so if you ever do get in a pickle with um, your designs, you, you can contact the support. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no harm in doing that. I mean, if you're if you're great at navigating the forums, um, there, there's a lot of information in the forums. But you can call them. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Or chat them in the in the web. In and, the, but thanks, Franco. That's okay. that's really um, a, a, I think an astute observation on what um, could be really great for the, yeah. the system to be able to do. I do think that when you're um, working with buttons, a lot of times you don't want to make them too wordy, mm -hmm. like you don't want to have more than three words, four words at most. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Um, so there are sometimes like constraints that you want to stick to and um, in your design system, defining how long a button could go is something to define as well. Because mm -hmm. your defined system, sh your, your design system should have definitions around how you use components. Because mm -hmm. that like it's one thing to use the wrong component, but it's another thing to use the right component incorrectly. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Right? Like, you can have the right component, but then you're actually reusing it in a way that it's not meant. Right. That That's yeah, that's kind of designer error. Yeah, and that can have a cascading effect. It can, yeah. yeah. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're defining your design system. Right. Nicholas, I very much appreciate your attention to detail with my spacing, and thank you, and I fixed it. Um, he told me that my copy was off-centered, and so in order <laughs> to, I mean, a quick way to do this, like let's say you have copy that you just kind of plopped in, if you copy, if you select both the text and the button itself, and then just go to these guys up here to vertically center it, horizontally. and that is that horizontally center it and vertically center it, um, then it makes it simple. We are all here for your. <laughs> he said it's giving you anxiety. Your, for your it gives mental me health. Anxiety too. We, we are here for you, Nicholas. <laughs> we are here to ease your uh, your your tattooing anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our. Our Star designer Wars. mindset. Yes, yes, designing for Star Wars. Yeah. Um, awesome. So you guys, we pretty much have our flow here. Um, you know, again, I would I would prefer to have all real content here instead of just repeating tags and and labels over and over. But it is helpful just to kind of get the lay of the land and see what we're doing. And so I think we are in a pretty good spot to prototype this baby. What do all you right. think? I yeah, I agree. Um, I would, I would love for you to um, really quickly, and this is something, um, sometimes we have uh, different versions of XD. This is a, just like a kind of behind the scenes maintenance on yeah. if you're setting up your file to share with anybody mm -hmm. um, to do uh, collaboration, um, we have to have the same version of XD. 
right. So, uh, oh. if, so if you wouldn't mind hitting Command Save and saving your file, and this is uh, just a really standard thing that sometimes we had to do, and then go to your Creative Cloud icon on your top tray that has Here? a little red icon. Yeah. This guy. Oh and my then, God! Updated. Yeah, and then let's go to XD. Oh my goodness! I have not that, updated. It's all right. All right. Continue. Remove old versions. Um, sure. Yeah. It sounds scary. <laughs> but Does you saved, scary. but you saved your document to the I Creative did. Cloud, and that's right. that's automatically. One question I had when I'm working offline, like I was working on my flight yesterday mm. or two days ago, um, I wasn't sure if XD would be able to save if I was offline. Right. So this is uh, this is where I love the ability to be able to have two different types of saving. Right. So you mm. can save locally. Um, you can also save in the cloud, and so. So what's that, what's that saying? Save, save your, your work. work and close. Oh, I have to close XD. Oh yeah, close it. You already saved it. So you're yeah. Um, so yeah, you have something else open too. I think that's day I, one. Yeah, day one. Day one. So yes, you can totally still save, but it'll just save locally. Okay. But you won't be able to access the cloud if you don't have Wi-Fi. Right, then, but it won't. I won't be losing my work. You won't be losing your work. You might be creating new work, so you might have to merge them after. Got it. Right. So that's maintenance is is is, is a is a big thing mm -hmm. um, when you are thinking about how your um, your files are are working with like are you duplicating a file and then working on two files? Right. Um, anyways, that's that's a, a little bit more tricky on as far as like managing some of that stuff. Um, no, but it's helpful. It's helpful to know. So this is a necessary evil if you're thinking of um, of sharing. Um, collaborating with with another person you have to be on the same version of XD in order to do that and that's what we were trying to do and we couldn't so now we are gonna try this and it's gonna Yay. work and I'm going to be able to open it so let's and go this is our, this is my okay Oops. so now so so Rosina's already right. shared this file with me um, so the way to do this is kind of like walk people through it and see how see how we did that so go to the little um, oh, yeah. user icon up there right and now with this new feature, um, co-editing, um, I'm I've been added here. He's been added. Yeah. So. So you'd be adding anyone who you would want to invite, literally mm -hmm. to this file, mm -hmm. and then we can work on the same file together. What? Right. Yes. Which is design magic. It is design magic, and some for some designers it might be uh, a little bit anxiety, because you get to see into their into their crazy mind. Right. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it has its benefits and flaws. Mike wants to know how do I access things? <laughs> things I should make with Mike ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> a little. That's that's a really. I think you create your own file like M Mike files. <laughs> yeah. So oh. so I, I I'm in. Um, awesome. And so I think we'll, we'll stay on yours. Okay. Um, but let, let's go to your. Um, to the beginning of your experience, so I can kind of know where you are also okay. um, Great. thinking to start this Well, it'd be cool to have a before and after. Oh, and can we also make the drop downs interactive? Can we go through a whole experience where we like mm -hmm. search for something? Let's, let's add, I'm, usually when I prototype, I try to think about the story I'm trying to tell. For sure. Like, so, right, right. So the story I want to tell through this is we're going to add a recipe. Um, go through that experience. Then I want to see the recipe appearing here on my homepage, um, and then I want to search for that recipe. Yeah, is that the right story? Right. So I think let's get those screens in order. Okay. Um, so I would say like duplicate um, the screen right. that you want to begin this experience, and so let's let's get it in. Okay. So we're just gonna move some of these guys aside. Um, why are people calling me? And I did have. I also went through, and this is a, a necessary exercise when thinking about the types of categories and and the types of tags that you want to provide. Like you need to kind of get an idea of how much content are you going to have, and and how is that going to work with your interface. Um, so, for example, ingredients. Like I'm not going to have a ginormous drop down that has yeah. you know 20 different categories. So I might have to. Think about a view more affordance True. the same way Epicurious did yeah. um, in order to support that. So you always have to be thinking about how well can your interface grow? Um, yeah. Can it grow? Can it shrink? You know, how does how can it um, can it live within the different kinds of content that you put in it? 
You have to think about that. Yeah. And, uh, like, as <laughs> Mike just had a, a hashtag scope creep, because that's what developers sell me is, yeah, that's increasing it's scope. Increasing scope, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I think, think further along. Yeah. What you do. You do. Which I do. Because you created a feature that you love that might not be included. Yeah, see, thinking, I didn't have time to do it, so. That's fine, and you, but you understand that. Right, right. right. Um, so, yeah, because yeah. having a big, long drop-down list is just like. No. It's just it's not. It's not usable. Yes, it's, it's, it's something that is necessary, but is so, like, it's not going to be a good experience. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And like, um, I can see you doing stuff. <gasps> that's crazy. So, um. I almost want to give extra credit to somebody who wants to come up with a landing marketing page for Marinate. <laughs> if a new user came to the marketing site, what would they see? What's Marinate's brand? Think on it. <laughs> yeah. That, remember, we were talking about marketing earlier. Like, that's, right. that's not our forte. Right. But everyone needs, I mean, think about discovery. Like, how are people going to get here? How do they create? their own mm -hmm. account to begin with. There has to be some kind of default marketing site right. that they come to they and say, to. oh, I want to sign up and create an account on Marinate. Right, that, 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 that initial entry gate, right? Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, we call it marketing sites. Some people have different nomenclature for it. So, totally. Um, okay, so here is my default um, site with my drop downs and my um, already added recipes. Actually, I'm gonna change this one because we're gonna we're gonna be adding this baby later. So let's make um, let's do uh, chicken fajitas, and I have a bunch of awesome images from Adobe Stock that I can use. Although I might have to duplicate one. These fajitas look well. These are quesadillas, but. Who's a? Uh, All right, yeah. Who's really similar? Yeah. <laughs> you can have fajita in a quesadilla. There, there you go. go. <laughs> quesadillas. Um, I often really prefer to have like as close to real content as possible, you know, so it's not just um, you know repeating things over and over. Like lorem them up some, right. so you can get a feel for that content. So here's our site. So the first thing we want to do then is add a recipe. So here we want to make a hover state for our CTA. Right. I'm gonna do this on my own. You're gonna do it? Okay, cool. I was ah! gonna I was gonna do it, but you let's You were gonna do it. do it? Let's let's see. Okay. Um and we wait. have three minutes for the submission deadline. So I really encourage anybody that's working on those projects last minute, uh, get them in so we can take a look at them. If they're if they're not complete, that's okay too. I think sometimes in design uh, we feel that we always just need to put like Ever, we're never done, right? Never so, done. So this just, is not right. It's all about feedback. Really done. So yeah. if, if you think about like, want to get your stuff looked at, by all means submit it because this is great stuff for portfolio. Like these design challenges. Mm -hmm. If you are entering X XD um, or you're entering UI design, UX design, and you want to like land a role somewhere, like you have to build a portfolio. And sometimes these are just an easy way for you to start a project that you can put on portfolio to land a gig. Absolutely. Like it's, it's really just an exercise and, yeah. and to it, totally embrace it. It's a good way to challenge yourself as well. Mm -hmm. um, and this is great exposure for you to um, get some people to look at your work, um, professionals like yourself who've been yeah. in the business for a long time. Who knows, maybe she's uh, looking to hire you. <laughs> right? I don't know. Maybe We've been looking to hire a designer for a long time. Yeah. So if you live in Columbia and you are a talented you <laughs> designer, but call we me. We have remote collaboration. There we right? go. There you know. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, so I think the hover state is going to be, I made the drop shadow a little larger. I made the button size a little larger. So. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe I need to do more. Let's uh, let's do another one. Let's uh, experiment. Uh, okay. So go to the original default and add one. You know what I like is, what? is so do a new one. And let's just see. Let, let's do outline. Oh. I like. Do uh, you want to just have outline? Do it. Let's try Wait. it. Let's do a green outline on hover. Hold on. I think I have to select individual. I think you got it. Green outline on hover. Um, add a green outline. Add a green outline to the to the box, yeah. Okay. And make it like two. Okay. And then uh, make the and back. And then we want to probably make it on the outside, right? Yeah, and make the back. Hmm. Hmm. Make the back white. Let's just try this. The back. Not, yeah. The, the, the fill, fill. The fill. Yeah. Sorry. And then make the text uh, green. Let's just see what it looks like. Yeah. Alright. And then maybe make it bold. 
we're just on the fly trying mm -hmm. to see how it could look. Maybe, Super fun. Yeah, there you go. And now let's go into uh, a prototype. Let's see. Yeah. Nice. Looking sharp. So now what? Go to prototype? Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, let's see. There's there's one thing we didn't do. What? We had to change uh, the select select it again. We had to change it from go to default. Mm-hmm. All right. Now try it. Oh. Oh. What's going on? All right. Close it. We'll get hmm. it. We'll get it. We'll get it. How does it know what the state is? Whether it's hover, default. I mean, hover, tap. Right. It's so so select it again. And it is in component, that's a component, right? We know that. Um, so then let's right click it. And let's see. Okay, okay, you know what? Actually, I think we're gonna go in prototype mode, that's why. What? We, we go to prototype mode. <gasps> oh, I just put play. Yeah, there you go. There, oh. now click that arrow. There oh, we sorry. go. sorry. That's what we need to do. What, I click the arrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll then click what? click the arrow. And now we're gonna have some controls here. So it needed to, to have a trigger. So we're gonna to go to trigger, so interaction on the right panel. And that's hover. Oh, cool. Okay, and this is where you can change your settings, right? Auto animate, um, your your destination. Let's select that, and then uh. do it to state three. And then I think ease in and out, ease in and out. Let's do that. And we have uh, our submission deadline while we're wrapping up. We're going to come back and show you that what this will look like. Um, but let's take a look at some of these uh, submissions on Discord. We Ooh. have our. Um, activity channel that we want to look at on XD. I'm refreshing my page. So if you hop over to my screen, we're going to check, take a look at some of these uh, designs that are submitted recently. There's a whole bunch oh of them. Oh my look god, yes! And so if for those who submitted designs, what we're looking at today, possibly some asset management if you have submitted designs for that. Um, emoji reactions is most likely what I want. I want to see these emoji yeah, reactions. Yeah, I love emojis. Um, that's, I feel like the way we speak now a lot is is in like these these emojis. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a simple way. I I mean, I talk, like I love the stickers now on iOS where it's like your, my own face. <laughs> I know. Like, it's getting more I haven't personal. done it yet, but my mom's done. <laughs> she oh. actually makes a great emoji. <laughs> I, I love it when like our parents yeah. adopt these technologies more than us. I I have <laughs> to I have to make a PSA okay. real quick. I have an apology to make. Um, yesterday I claimed that both of my parents were not extremely tech savvy and I was wrong in saying that and I apologize and it was it was misguided. misguided. Mom and dad, you are both very tech savvy. You are. You're more <laughs> into this than we are. So my my dad is so good. Really? Oh my gosh. It's it's insane. Uh, granted like his tech size is massive. Which yeah. is fine. That's fine. But yeah, accessibility, yeah, right? Yeah, accessibility, you know, there you go. To zoom in. Yeah. Um, so emoji reactions are also great for accessibility too, because um, they're a way for us to understand emotions a lot easier. So let's, let's dive let's in, because there might be some advanced prototyping in there too. Okay, so please share your files if you haven't. And oh, we need to go to the current. And what challenge. is this chat thing that you guys have? What is so, this? So Discord. Discord. Um, if, if anybody, a moderator can please help us with the. Uh, um, a, a, a link to, to look at our Discord, but it's essentially if you go into your chat, um, you can, if you're j logged into Behance, you can look at your portfolio review on the top of your chat. That's so cool. Um, and so that way you can see uh, what we're looking at. And you That's can get really in there. cool. Um, and and if, if you could see, Andrea Hawk is the, is the moderator um, or the host for the creative challenges. Mm. Um, so she's done a lot of work putting these things together. So, and I think just an amazing, um, person that is is just doing great work for uh, for Adobe. Um, so this is uh, let's see, let's let's give a little context. Sometimes. Okay. So today's challenge um, is that's not it. It is advanced prototyping. Okay. So let's just loving the video. Ooh, this is beautiful. Let's take a look. Look at that. I really bouncing. love the color combination. And I think like aside from just like the interactivity, the design is very clean. Yeah. And um, so Evento, um, I, I imagine this is like how to see concerts and venues and, mm. and I think really great. Um, I think it looks, it looks beautiful and it looks understandable and I wanna use this app because I think like this new pattern of like the top 
drawer coming down. Mm -hmm. um, I do think like design wise, maybe some like more definition with that um, uh, that drop shadow even, like push it a little bit more, it's, it loses itself in screens. Um, but it's still really great. Yeah. I, I'm loving it. And the, as Can far as, yeah, as far as the um, interaction goes, that could be a drag interaction instead of a tap. I would want to see like a hover over, mm -hmm. you know, the... There's a, there's a slight glitch there where you kind of see some interaction. It's okay. It breaks the illusion a little bit, but I think great work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, l I love the colors. Really um, great. The typography is a little tough to read, the the, the headers, the, but the serif. yeah, mm -hmm. the serif's a little hard to read, but otherwise yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's, a, it's one of those um, serifs that's great on headers, really big. Yeah. But sometimes when you put them in yeah. like an H2, they kind of get lost. A right, the little lines yeah. get lost. Really great work nice. there. Um, this is uh, from the, uh, the one with the Creative Challenge for Asset Management um, related to food. And so this design is a way for you to manage these assets. So you're talking about il illustrative. Yeah, right? this could be blank states. This could be blank states. And, and really what we want is imagery that um, is easy to understand. And mm -hmm. I think I think this is this is really great. You know, it's hard to illustrate food. Mm -hmm. um, it It's a really tough subject matter to illustrate. So I think you did it well here. Yeah, and it looks like what you can do is just get a photo and then trace over it, right? Oh, yes. Use a Adobe Fresco kind of like Mix your Adobe products. Use Adobe Fresco to do these illustrations, overlays, uh -huh. um, or Photoshop if nice. you have a little tablet. That's awesome. And then just bring it back into XD, and you that's, have that's great illustrations. Like, there's nothing wrong with that tracing, right? Yeah, I think if I were to have any um, constructive criticism, I'd maybe want to see a um, a different contrast in the background. Mm. Like, uh, you're using the illustration in the background, and so. I think it's a little distracting. If if I didn't see that texture there, I'd be focusing a lot more on the illustrations on the tiles themselves. Right, and I I, I love the um, I just love the the treatment for that that search bar. It it, it is big, but yeah. like, I think it works because like you're gonna have maybe like a sentence you might write in there. I think it's great. Um, the logo needs a little finesse um, for me, but otherwise like. Keep keep really pushing yeah. um, that, but that's that's not what this was about. This was about like your um, your your information that you were structuring. So great job there. This one, ooh, look at that day two. So this one is looking at, I believe, let's see, day two was. Well, I'm not sure. Let's see. And this is on someone's behance, and this is um, Jessica. Ooh. Really beautiful stuff here using. Oh, this is um, a scooter. Scooter location sharing. and yeah. using maps, and you can use um, plugins like uh, map plugins where you can kind of get real, real data. Um, is this a prototype? I'm not sure. Oh yeah, it is. Oh. Oh, cool. Look at that. Oh, you can pick what kind of scooter you want. Oh, It's very wow. fancy. I want this. <laughs> I'll write a, a retro Vespa. <laughs> yes. I don't know about in San Francisco. Yeah. I'd be a little scared. <laughs> oh, wow. And you use um, QR code to, yeah, there's to unlock it. Scooters Pretty. everywhere, right? I know. Like, get on, I think this is more compelling than those like those electric scooters. But yeah, I, 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 I think great job. Uh, it looks beautiful. Um, if you're not following Jessica, go follow her. She looks like she got some amazing stuff. That's that awesome, she Jessica. Shares. Nice job. Yeah, and I, oh, there's there's another one here. There's a couple more. Oh, got oh. A design uh, system. Look at that. Nice. Let's see. How do you pick which ones to look at? Oh my God, there's so many. Wow. Look at that. These all came in. Yeah, these all came in. Okay, let's look okay. at this one. The journaling app. Oh. Let's spend a couple a couple more minutes. Oh. And, Oh, this, that's really cool. Cool. I, I, pushing this dark mode. Everyone loves dark mode. They do. They do love it. Ah, wow. Ooh. Recent entries, mood. So I guess, oh. You know, I would almost imagine the background to like change when you move that slider. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, great, great ideas there. Like, being able to adjust, I think the concept of being able to adjust your your interface with a slider mm -hmm. is really fun. Yeah, it's yeah. a really fun idea. 
I also love dark mode when it has purpose. Like I can picture because it's a journal, you might be writing at night. Right. You know what I mean? Sometimes dark mode can just be like, hey, it's dark mode. Right. But and, this has a purpose to it. And the, I don't know if you've ever ever like noticed when you're driving at night and you're like using Google Maps. Oh yeah. How like, it changes. How it changes. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, what happened? Yeah. Like it's yeah. like it's like that. <laughs> right. It's, it's like, like kind of like driving oh, when, the, when the street lights come on when you're driving. It's kind of that that moment yeah. when you like recognize something well, changed. That's just wonderful when that happens. I don't know. I th I think I think like street lights are. Uh, Amazing technology. Remember, people actually would get paid to turn them on by hand. I did not know that. Well, have you For watched, real? have you watched Mary Poppins? Yes. So like that's like one of the subplots is like the uh, the the one of the jobs that people had was what? they light the lamps. Oh wow, that went over my head. Yeah. Well, I just watched it, right? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> four year old. Four year old daughter. <laughs> and it's like whoa, like technology. Like, that's Now cool. these things do them by themselves. Yeah. And like. <laughs> Jo maybe the people got different jobs now. Right. Let's hope. <laughs> let's, hope. let's hope. All right. Well, um, I think maybe there's awesome. maybe there's time for one more. Yeah, um, let's talk about one more. Pause. Pa what does Pat say? No, it's pet adoption. Oh, let's look okay. At that one. <laughs> no, yeah. look at I like the name. Positively. Positively. Okay. Very punny. Oh, oh. Cute. Thank you for this. So this is an app where you can find pets to adopt. Uh, yeah. Like Dogs animals. and cats, so you have a filter. I don't think these pets are going to have any problems. I know. Oh, and is it like a swipe? Oh, yeah. It looks yeah. like it's a carousel. Look yeah. at that baby, Winston. I want you. I mean, Winston's not going to, like, there's competition for that one. Right? Oh, my gosh. He's adorable. So you can just call the owner. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, I love that direct call to action. It's like just pick up the phone and call That's the owner. Great stuff. Um, Keep pushing this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the two the two color themes you have are are interesting. Yeah. Um, the brownish and the blue teal. I like that. There's a separation, right? Yeah. I think there might be a little too much, like with the the, the lines, um, on the on yeah. The, like some some of this stuff gets a little like a little too patterny. Um, yeah, just keep pushing your designs. Also, if you're looking for this stuff to get like published on your portfolio. Um, Pushing it a little bit more to like add a description, add context. Um, it's going to help people that see this out of context because in this setting it works because we're here talking about it. Mm -hmm. But if you're putting this on your Behance and people just stumble upon it, they might not know exactly what you're trying to solve. Um, so just like a little bit more. Oh, a little context. framing. A little framing. Yeah, right. definitely, little, definitely. Might, might go some long framing. Way. All right. Um, I don't have too much time because we want to finish some more stuff, right? Yeah, sure. We got time. Mm -hmm. So let's. Um, Let's keep it on my screen because I don't know if you've realized, but have I'm, you been doing some work? I'm here. I, I haven't because I let you kind of drive this component that gotcha. we were doing. But let's let's look at the hover state. Let's put Julian to work. Yeah, let's put me to work. <laughs> let's, let's do that. Uh, let me locate that. So the hover state was working, and it's on the style page. This is where the okay, we're here. Yeah. All right, let's do that. So we had the prototype. Mm -hmm. We had this selected. We I checked it. It should okay. be working. Let's see. Let's see. Let's play it. No. Wait, I don't know if that's the right one. Yes, it is. Let's. How about let's go to your screen. I know okay. we want to put me to work, but I could still work while you're doing okay. this. <laughs> okay, we'll go to my screen yeah. so we're on the same page. Maybe it's an update or something for you because I just tried it and see how it's red. Um, oh, that's red because you're on it. See, it's working. Yeah, it worked. It worked. Maybe. Um, for some reason, I didn't get it. This is really freaking cool. Like, my mind is blown. Yeah. Do you know how many steps this used to take me? But th so this is an iteration too. Because right. your original one was like, let's look at the other one. Let's, right. Let's see if we can okay, wire, yeah. wire that one up. <sighs> All right. Uh, yeah, and then we can just see which one we like better. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I go to, to prototype. prototype. And, and then, then here. So this is something else. Okay. We can We can add additional. Yeah, so if we go, if we actually follow this flow mm -hmm. to another screen, come back, we can actually have different interactions. So let's let's save that for a little later. Okay. Um, let's go back to that first plus button. First one. Yeah, and that's the one we want to edit. Okay. Uh, Do I? This is default. Right. No, you're you're right. And let's then I want to edit. Let's do that one. That one. Yeah, the second one. But it's nothing's changing. It's on keys and game. That's weird. Keys. Let's go back oh. to uh, hover. 
Why don't I even have hover tab? Let's try okay. selecting that. Nothing, well. Let's see again, yeah, that one. Maybe I'll go out of prototype mode for a second and then go back into prototype mode. Okay, now I have this hover. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna select state two. I don't know if it worked. <laughs> Please don't have your head explode on stream. Kind of messy. D toughly, like, I <laughs> <laughs> no, no exploding heads here. But there is an emoji for that, right? Yes. Gotta love <laughs> the emojis. All right. I'm not sure if it's working or if I'm not doing it correctly. Let's see. Uh, going see, back to your trigger. This? Yeah, that Nothing one. Nothing happens. Hmm. That's it. Work that. Yeah, I think you're on it. I am. But. We saw it work. Let's, yeah. let's prototype it again. There, I, I mean, it's still, I think that looks cool though. It looks right? awesome. Let's All go right, with let's, it. Let's continue on. Okay. <laughs> we have like 10 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, we have 10 minutes. We okay. gotta go on. I really right. wanna, I really wanna build this. Let's do it. Okay. So where are we? Do, do, do. So we're, um, we were defining this story. Okay. Right, so we're defining the story. So, oh, we're here. Um, this is where we, this is our default. And mm -hmm. so then the first thing we want to do is add a recipe. We want this CTA to launch. I should, these are out of order and I always love putting my screens in order. Um, we want this to launch this modal. And then oh, this yeah. is going to be next. Okay. Okay. So, so the, the my recipe is to go into the modal. Add a recipe goes into the modal. Gotcha. So. Are you what are are you doing something now or am I doing something? I'm I'm looking to to see where your files are going. And I, it's a little there's a little delay, so sometimes oh, doing it. it live is a little tricky. Okay, so if I click this modal, yeah, and if then you I have, extend that to. Do I extend the hover or do I just extend that, this? Yeah. Hmm. Take it there. Ah, there, there we go. Cool. So this is the state. That's gonna mm -hmm. come out of it, and this is where it's gonna take there me. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I? What if I want this page to kind of like, like come up, like um, have an animation? Oh, so you want to do an overlay? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Um, so what we're gonna take is um, this artboard. Uh, the interaction that you want to define is the trigger. It's a tap. The action auto animate. Let's do, do the trigger again. Look at the trigger. Uh, and then, okay, and then select the artboard of the add recipe. All right, and that is going to be. If it's way. if it's too, if it's too complicated right now, we don't have to. We will. We, we will get it. Um, but let's just wire it up, and then okay. we can change it. All right. All right. So here it's wired, and then we're going to click this guy. Mm -hmm. And that is. Going, we're gonna pretend to have the file browser window thing. All right. And then it's gonna come here. Um, okay, and now it would be cool to, to make some of these guys work. And we have this whole interaction here with the adding a tag. I mean, I don't wanna try to do too much right now. We right. can maybe keep it simple first. Um, so let's. Not have the I tags. Think we right have now. that one that works, right? Which the, the American? Oh, mm -hmm. so this is, we can we can have that one work. Okay, so let's make this one. We have to in prototype mode. I think it's already wired up for it, right? You select it and well, it does it. It has it has the default state. Okay, but so, I, do I have to do anything? So just uh, select it, change it back to the default state. So highlight it. Yeah, Sorry. and then okay. um, go to default state. Oh wait. Um, okay. Deselect de again. Should I be in design or prototype? Design. You're talking about design okay. works. Design, mm. default yeah, state. Yeah, select that. Got it. There we go. And then when in prototype mode, it'll work. Okay. It will? Mm -hmm. So watch, uh, hit play. Hit play? Mm-hmm. Boom. <laughs> no. That's weird. But how, how would we know? I mean, before we had to have okay. this guy, and that was a hover. Okay, that right? changed to tap. So yeah, yeah. Change so it back it's to hover. a hover. No, actually, we want it to be. No, tap, we want though. it to be tap. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, so select it, the little arrow. This guy. Yeah. 
and then trigger. Trigger, tap. Yes. And then auto animate and it, that should that should work now. Okay. But it's on the Yeah. Wrong state. Right. So now change it to default state. There. Right, but then there's no indication here that it would be And then change this one. What? Then select that when this yeah. arrow? Mm-hmm. And now that this is what changes. It's gotta say you gotta so so select it again and you gotta have the destination. All right. And so the destination isn't defined. So Right, but the destination is a state change. Yeah, and it'll do it. Wait, it changed. Go <laughs> that's weird. I wonder if this is a little um it's like I need to refresh or something. Maybe it because it was working and now it seems like so hit the arrow again? It's not it letting me. Green. So do the destination again. On the right panel? Yeah. Destination. Default state. Default state. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So this is green and now we're gonna Okay. Then, it, then it'll turn it back to okay. white to deselect right. it. Alright. We're getting this. Cool! Yeah. But that's now, not defined. Right. So we gotta define that. Okay. And I would want to make that animation just a little bit faster too. Okay. Um, so go select default state on top. Okay. And then define that. What do you mean? Here? Yeah, there okay. you go. And then okay. choose the no. destination. It's to green. green. And then quicker, you want it quicker, right? Yeah. Point one. Let's just make it real quick. Right. Okay. And that should do it. So now you can just keep tapping it and it should keep doing it. Nice. Yeah. I do want it to be even quicker than that. So it's, it's the, the other transition from green to default is needs to be changed Kay. to point 0.1 as well. Okay. Yeah, and so and, and here's the thing, when you so when it's you're so rough cool. when you're roughly designing, mm -hmm. um, you sometimes don't create components while you're designing. Yeah. So how do you reestablish the, the those new as how do you put them in your component library to then cascade your whole experience to have all of your components actually correct, right? Right. That's that's where um, you'd want to go back in and define all of those and connect them back to your your components. Yes. Um, but let's get like the experience wired because right. we have a few more minutes. We have three more minutes. Okay. So, so then so we have we go there and then this goes to here this page, um, and then let's say we want to see it now. So then we click here, and we, it's not a hover, we don't want, oh, we're going to tap. And we want that to go to this page. Right. And then we want this X um, to go. <laughs> Thanks, Richard, we're trying here. <laughs> the, <laughs> And I think the main the main thing is is the collaboration works great, but sometimes when your Wi-Fi is um, is yeah. there's a delay, there's just a little bit of issues for our because I actually am not seeing you anymore in my on really? my file. Really? Yeah, it's just the internet. It must thing. be Wi-Fi, yeah. Yeah, because okay. it it we we do love this feature. Okay. And I was I was seeing you, and then I know disappeared. I was seeing you too. Okay, you guys, if this works, I'm gonna be really happy. Okay, so. Everybody, thank you so much for helping me <laughs> bring to fruition marinate. Let's see it in action. Oh, look at that. We add something, voila, we have the image. We can add our tags. Add the American. Um, oh, yeah. Boom. Add American. Save it. O M F J. Look at that. That was a cool animation and that I, mean, I that, didn't even do on purpose. That didn't even take too much time. And that and, and with more finesse and more time like defining your design system and all that stuff, like you can make some really compelling ex experiences really quickly. This is um, super cool. So then your dinner tags and stuff like that, you'd be able to delete those. Mm -hmm. That's see I also just I want this to, to exist. I know. I'm I'm I love my dirty cookbooks. And I know. I, I have Pinterest tags everywhere. <laughs> um, just aggregating all of that, letting me control my yes. Like so, I have this this like this big Rolodex thing that like my, my mom actually has it right now, and and she's recipe Rolodex. Right, recipe nice. Rolodex. Yeah. And I feel like it's 
it's basically a metaphor of that. Mm -hmm. It's bringing it that into the digital experience, it is. right? And, it is. And for, for us, like, we kind of are like that now. We want things to, like, be a little bit more accessible to us yeah. in the way we use them. Um, so I, I think we're, we're definitely going to marinate on this until 2020. Let's marinate on it. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it was amazing. Such an awesome, awesome experience. And, and for all of you that are wondering if we're going to be here next week, we're actually taking a break. So go eat some turkey yeah, and holiday stuff. food. Go holiday ha food. Have, have a holiday. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rosina. Awesome. Thank you, guys. This was great. Have a good one. Have a good one.